I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> okay. Are you good? Come on, motherfucker. Sorry, I forget I have a PA here now. That's, I don't mind. Okay, let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. One last thing. Just, we, we go freely, like, you know, if you want to drop the F-bomb, drop it. It's okay. We drop it. Yeah, that we're dropping the F-bomb. <laughs> Right, so welcome to another episode of the YTM show. YTM, which stands for You the Man, and this is a this is a movement. No, you the man. You the man. Yeah, this is a movement whereby I come here to you literally every day to help you transform your body through your mind, and I want to bring you tips, hacks, strategies on how you could actually. Get from where you are and then go where you want to be. And as part of this journey, you will see me interviewing great people. You will see me talking to experts in the field. And today I've got somebody I look up to. I've got a guest, which is pretty rare on the show. So I, I really like handpick my guests. And, and literally, I, I bumped into this guy two weeks ago in London and, and I was like, Man, we've got to do something. And uh, he's a CEO, he's an athlete. He's got two books. He's a public speaker. The list is long. He's been working with uh, clients ranging from uh, top influencers of the world, CEOs. And he spent the past two decades helping people transforming their lives to, through seminars, speaking engagement, retreats around the globe. And I really see him like wow. so, Oli, of the fitness space so uh guys welcome to jean-pierre de villiers live on the show with wow. me jean-pierre how are you my brother Merci, monsieur. thank you very much i'm amazing thank you so much for having me uh what a great idea to go live with my audience guys i'm i'm always looking for i feel so honored right now i don't know if you're still watching but uh my friend jay shetty number one influencer in the fucking wow. world is watching the live. Wow, we got Jay Shetty. He, really? Yeah, he's That's watching. Big, man. Wow. He's big making me blush. You're making me blush. That is Which amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, look, I'm really, I'm, I mean this from my heart. I'm really, really happy to be here, and um, I, I just love doing podcast interviews, speaking because for me, the my big why is I just want to be able to influence people in a positive way because we're all being influenced every single day of our life and the world needs better leaders. So I do my very best through my mistakes, through my self-education, through spending time with incredible people and role models. I just want to be an, a, a positive influencer. Uh, and I love in my bio what you said. You sent it to me, but you said he's the Tony Robbins of fitness. I've never articulated that so well, but that's a very big goal for me. I always say, yes, I promoted Tony around the world and work with success resources, but I don't want to be Tony Robbins. Yeah. I never have. I want to be like Tony. Yeah. Uh, really, I want to be the Tony of fitness. Yeah, and absolutely, man. I've, I've seen your stuff and, and that your stage presence made me think of Tony straight away. And I was like, yeah, now he's the Tony of the fitness space. So, um, Jean-Pierre, we're going to start. Um, I really want you to, to share a bit with us, like your backstory, how you got from where you used to be to where you are now. Yeah. And, and, and really, like for the, for the two people on this audience who probably never heard of you, who is Jean-Pierre de Villiers? So, uh, obviously, because of a lack of time, I'm going to try and summarize this as much as possible. Awesome. I am originally from Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah. I grew up with challenges and adversity and, you know, life I believe that life was happening to me as opposed to for me, you know, from my parents getting divorced to uh, living in two different countries, to going to eight different schools, to two different boarding schools, being bullied because I had no, I had no stability or I had a lack of stability in my life. So I, I never felt full. I never felt good enough. I never felt strong internally or, or physically strong. You know, I was now I'm lean like boxer style before I was a scared shy, timid little boy. Uh, but long story short, I found something or something found me. Let's try and see if I can get connection back here. Oh, there you go. Uh, I found something at a very early age and it was sport. 
Uh, and whether it was a gift given to me by the universe or God or whatever, I just found sport at a very, very early age. I always say that I started playing rugby at the age of seven, but actually I started, I started doing judo at six years old uh, and just fell into sport and sport fell into me. And uh, I used it as a way to fuel my life throughout my upbringing. And by the age of 19, I'd, I'd chosen a, a specific sport, which was road cycling at the age of 13. And I really immersed myself in that fully. At the age of 13, I was a semi-pro cyclist. So, you know, hanging out with the pros, doing races, getting supplements, sponsors. But I just wasn't getting a paid salary just yet. Now I had two choices. Go pro and really fall into it or, you know, do something else. I've now left school. I'm 19 years old. And my cousin happened to tell me, why don't you come clubbing with me that weekend? Uh, and I went to a house club called a hard house club in Cape Town called Adrenaline. And I experienced everything that came with that environment. Let's just say that. So long story short, I found another way to feel good. Uh, and I realized I was never going to do this and be a professional cyclist. So I gave up cycling and I got immersed in imparting really and now i thought okay i was going to be a professional cyclist i was going to do the tour de france i was going to race in belgium and do the criterium series and the giro d'italia what am i going to do now i know i like clubbing i'll be a dj <laughs> <laughs> so i decided i was going to be a dj and uh, i always talk about um oh man keep losing signal i always talk about when you do things in life and you just commit, things will show up for you. When you sit on the fence, stuff doesn't show up for you. And I'm not religious, but even if you, you, know, if you are religious, you'll know that you know, if you're unsure, God doesn't give you something. You, the universe doesn't give you something. You don't get something from Mother Nature, whatever your beliefs are. But when you commit, shit shows up. And I said, I'm going to be a DJ. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And in that moment, my mom got some inheritance. And, uh, and I went to, I got a, just enough money to go study in music production. Moved to the UK because that was the land of opportunity, the land of music. And within three years, because, of, because I had known immersion and you know, doing what you want, putting yourself in the deep end, within three years was a full-time DJ. But the only thing is, I was a rock star as a DJ, but in my personal life, I was rock bottom. See, when I grew up, all I ever knew was health, fitness, happiness, being outdoors. And now I was living completely the opposite. And I thought I had the right plan, but I had the wrong plan. See, my plan was called, you know, one of my books, I talk about the C's and success. And I had, the, I had the C plan, but I had the wrong one. It was all about consumption. How can I get more? How can I get more popularity, money, acceptance, goals, drugs, alcohol, fuel, um, everything? And then I realized, hey, I've got it all wrong. And just to summarize it, because we have a lack of time, I changed my plan to one of consumption to one of contribution. How can I contribute more to myself so that I can contribute towards, uh, more towards other people? And you, I'm sure you know this, Ollie, that significant change comes from a significant moment of intensity, either immense pleasure or immense pain. You go to a seminar, you see Grand Cardone, and you think, oh, it's amazing, so inspiring. That's where change is created. Or on the flip side of that, a real moment of pain. When I was 23 years old as a DJ, I realized that, man, my life was so painful and heading in the wrong direction. And it reminded me of when I was 13 years old. One week after our birthday, myself and my father, we both had the same birthday on the July 27th. A week afterwards, I'd won my first cycling race and I came home. The police were at my door and unfortunately they were giving our, my mother and us the news that my father had taken his own life on the beach. And that was a very, very hard uh, moment for me. But exactly 10 years later, no coincidence, I don't think, I'm sitting in Riga, Latvia at the end of a DJ gig. It's 5 a.m. in the morning, New Year's Eve, 1st of January. And I'm sitting there absolutely in the worst shape of my life. And I realized I needed to make a change. So I said, hey, if I can become the worst version of me on my own, no, no one else is responsible for this. I did it. I must be able to, to become the best version of me. I've just got to find out how to do it. So I went back to the UK and I spoke to a friend of mine who happened to be a coach, power to you and me. And he said, JP, I want you to do these few things. I want you to do something else that you love every day. Guess what it was? Fitness. He said, I want you to find a role model. Here's a great idea for a role model. And he wrote down this name, Tony Robbins. I've been following Tony since then. He says, I want you to watch this movie called The Secret. And it's all about the power of intention, the law of attraction. What we put out is what we get back. You know? And I realized that, man, I've never had a role model. I'm not doing what I ultimately love, which has always been fitness. 
and my language and internal uh, self-talk is absolutely shit. It's rubbish. So I did the work. And I always talk today about doing the work, doing the work. doesn't matter whether you're a pupil or a priest. doesn't matter whether you're a student or a successful business person. There's always work to do. So I started doing the work, role modeling, learning from Tony, going to events, studying, reading books. And then I started to do the best with what I had, which was fitness. I said, man, I feel so good. I got fit. I got in shape mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And within 15 months, my whole life changed. I got a job in a gym. I was highest performing salesperson. And everything was now happening for me as opposed to to me. And that's where I made a decision that you said, you know what? My, I can't guarantee whether my father would be here or not. But if he, if he had someone like the version of me I am now, something might have been different. And I said, fuck, now that I know this, I am obliged to share this with the world. It's, it's, I, I have to do it. So I became a personal trainer. And then because I wasn't passionate about anatomy or personal training, but I was passionate and obsessed with seeing change within people, mm -hmm. seeing people go from ordinary to extraordinary, from unhappy to very, very happy. I said, right, where does this change come from? And like Tony says, 80% of success is psychology. Yeah. So I went from personal training to coaching. And then I wrote a book, 77 Ways to Reshape Your Life. Then I wrote another book, How to Go from Ordinary to Extraordinary. Then I wrote another book, um, The Extraordinary CEO, How to Win a Business in Life. And I started speaking. And I sp first spoke to five people, then 50, then 500. And the most people I've spoken to is 5,000 people. So that's my story. Wow, wow. And that's 15 years. So over the last 15 years, what I've done as a summary is I've gone back to sport. I'm a professional speaker, international speaker. I don't say that because it sounds cool. I say that because I get paid internationally to fly all over the world, from UAE to Asia to Australia to I've been to Poland, Ukraine, Norway, South Africa. I've been all over the place, man. I'm so blessed to do it with the greatest partners in the world, Najahi Events, Success Resources, Tony Robbins. I'm a professional athlete, ultra marathon runner, Ironman, professional boxer, uh, Muay Thai fighter. And um, yeah, man, I just got out of my own way. 15 years, I just kept getting out of my own way. Get the fuck out of the way, JP. Let's go. Like, there's the old version of me. Get the fuck out of the way. Oh, there's another old, get the fuck out of the way. And now I just believe that, you know, you've got to have this wit attitude to life. W-I-T, whatever it takes. Yes. And that's why I fucking have so much energy sitting with you. Because you definitely have the wit attitude. You know, you do whatever it takes to make it happen. And when you do that and you get out of your own way, anything and everything becomes possible. Thank you, my man. Wow. <laughs> wow. That, 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 that was, that's really nice, obviously, of you. And, and, and that's, that's a really, I'll say, interesting story with, uh, with ups, down, and, and, and challenges along, yeah. along the way. And I'm sure we can learn some stuff from that. Now, before we get into like, yeah the meaty and gritty of all the questions I've got for you. Because I want to learn from you. I want to learn a lot of stuff from you today. Uh, we can put this another day if you want. <laughs> okay. Version two. Version two. Okay. Um, I've got three rapid fire questions for you. I want to ask you questions and I want to see like, just like that. And um, the first one is something you believe in which other people think you were saying. That you, uh, two things. Yeah. One, I get it. It sounds so fluffy, so generic, so simple that you can do whatever you want. Okay. And obviously that has like, you know, I can't at 37 say, oh, I want to be an astronaut, you know, or I want to be the next Hussein Bolt or something. But if it's something like realistic that it has, you know, been a done before or you really believe, you really, really believe that it's possible right? Because we need to innovate. We need to always create things that aren't already existing in the universe or that aren't already here. If you believe that you can do it, I'm telling you now that you can do it. So that's the number one thing. I really believe at my core, in my heart, in fucking all of me, that you can do whatever you want. And I am proof to that. And if anyone watching this, listening to this, judges me, doubts me, I say, don't listen to my mouth. Right? Don't listen to the way all well, my words Watch the way I walk, right? Don't watch the way my mouth moves. Watch the way I walk because I will show you and I will keep showing you. Not for me, for you. Because maybe one day, maybe not a year from now, maybe 10 years from now, you might go, fuck, you know, this guy's right. I can do whatever I want. But in order for me to do that now and have massive, massive impact, the second thing I believe that people think I'm crazy for is for you to get the most out of your life, you've got to put yourself through immense pain. You know, I can't tell you enough from being a professional, doing a three professional Muay Thai fights, 
you know, how painful that was physically, emotionally, the training process for it, you know, feeling my shin bone and you know, it feels like the Rocky Mountains because it's been yeah. kicking, you know, breaking my uh, multiple bones in my right foot from kicking someone in the elbow. I learned a lot from this stuff. And also by doing these things that make me feel pain and suffering in those moments, you know, it makes me a stronger, better, more powerful version of myself. Now, you don't have to go be a professional boxer. There's another way to experience pain in a different way, a Vipassana meditation, right? Try go to a 10-day medita meditation retreat where you can't say shit to anyone. You can't use any words, no communication, no paper, no digital. That's another kind of pain. The yeah. point is you've got to do what's uncomfortable. And as that, you know, that saying goes, you know, you're, the magic lies outside of the comfort zone. So if you're scared of speaking, go fucking speak. Not to 50 people, go to as many people as you can. Now, I got diagnosed with a knee disease. I'm speaking so fast because I know we have very little time. I got diagnosed with a knee disease at 13 years old. And I created this reality in my mind that I couldn't run because a specialist doctor said to me, you cannot run or play any impact sport anymore that results in your knee being impacted. Mm -hmm. You know what? For 15 years, one five years, I never ran once. Wow. Because someone fucking told me that, oh, you can't run. And I made that my reality. And one of the many thousands of things I've learned from Tony Robbins, or hundreds of things at least, is you've got to stand guard at the door of your mind. And when I realized this in my late 20s coming on 30, I realized, man, who says? Who says I can't run? Just one person. There's 7.5 billion opinions of what I can and can't do. The most important of which is mine. So let me try and let me go and do this. And I ran 100 meters, 200, 2016, I ran 10 kilometers every, one, every day for 31 days. Then 10 half marathons for 10 consecutive days. Five marathons in five days. Then I ran four marathons in two days. Wow. Um, Anything is possible, man. Anything is possible. But for, for, for you to grow, you've got to go through pain. And the, the emphasis really is on through. In the process of you going through pain, you become a different person. You know, and there's this, there's this saying, a goal is not about the goal itself. It's about the person you become in the process of attaining or achieving that goal. Absolutely. And that's why, like, I'm signed up for an, an I've done like long old endurance races, triathlons, and stuff, but I've signed up for an actual Ironman this year, like the branded Ironman, where right? Ironman is an actual brand as opposed to an event. And there's like 120 or whatever around the world, over 100, I'm sure. But I've done the ninth hardest one in the world. Why? Because it's going to be more painful. So, because it's more painful, I'm going to become a much better, bigger version of myself than I was, you know, before doing it, rather than just doing an average one. And just to be clear, you know, all of the stuff that I'm speaking about isn't about being better than anyone else. Ollie, I don't want to be better than you. I don't want to be better than anyone watching this video. I want to be better than Jay Shetty. I don't want to be better than Tony Robbins. I just want to be better than me. Because the most, spiritual, the most spiritual level of living is to be happy. And the two things that ultimately make us happy are to grow and to contribute. And if you can't contribute to your highest degree, if you're not growing to your highest degree. So that's why it's important. Man. If you're scared of marriage, get, you know, if you're scared of relationships, get fucking married, get divorced, get divorced. Guess what? It's fucking painful. All the best to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like w what you just said. And um, from, from there I've picked up on a few things and, and I think they're kind of like encompass like what you, you, you about. Uh, Cause my next question is about, uh, the peak performance movements and i think you touched on a few points about it like uh, the pain and getting better and all these kind of things so from my research and everything i've read about you you talk about you talk a lot about peak performance and and i want what is peak performance and how to achieve it so you know some people some people think a coach is like a therapist right and some coaches are relationship coaches life coaches trauma coaches etc a spiritual coach i mean how many different coaches are there a peak performance coach is very different right like a, let's just say a therapist or a general coach works on like how can we take you from here to here like by, you know, working on trauma, working on regression, you know, finding something that's, mis you know, working on the relationships with your father and your mother and daddy issues and all that stuff. Yeah. Where peak performance, the best way to describe it is Lewis Hamilton or a Formula One racer sitting in their car doing a lap and then them getting out of the car and assessing what can be tweaked. That's what peak performance is about. It's generally for people that are already at their best or want to be at their very best 
And then because they want to, you know, it's a lifestyle. Peak performance or high performance is a lifestyle. It's the athlete life, right? And a peak performance athlete is someone that shows up to the track every day and says, how can I tweak this? How can I tweak that? Recognizing that there's always more. You know, it's every day looking to run one millimeter further. These are metaphors, by the way, to swim, you know, to touch the wall one millimeter faster, to jump one millimeter higher, to do one more rep. These are all metaphors for life. And that's why I love going to the Grand Prix because I'm in my fucking environment. Like I've been so blessed to be invited to the uh, Grand Prix final the last two years in a row in Abu Dhabi. And I love going in the pit lane and seeing all the cars. And you know, do you think to be at that level of, of living, right? And look how much I always say, the more you put out, the more you get back at that level of living. How much do they get paid? Pennies? No, they get paid fucking hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. No. And do you think that if the tire is performing 95%, do they put that car out on the track? No way. Not a fucking chance. No way. Because it's the millimeters or like, um, what does uh, the actor say in that football movie? I can't remember now. Al Pacino, he says, the inches around us are everywhere. It's those little inches that make all the difference. You know, it's, I've uh, become a student of the 5 a.m. club where I'd get up at 5 a.m. This year, I started studying 4.30 a.m. Wake Up Club. I do. Welcome to the club, man. <laughs> I'm, tweaking. I'm tweaking. And I can't tell you the diff. I got so comfortable with 5 a.m. that I, it was comfortable. Yes. So I was like, this is too comfortable for me now. So I thought, okay, how can I take this to another level? I've seen the science. I've seen my role models and mentors talking about 4, 4.30 a.m. I've heard about your hormones being, you know, like uh, the best time to wake up is 4 a.m. So I started it. And man, it's just a different, it's another world. Waking up at 4.30 a.m., let's see if I get to 4. It's another world. I get to 12 a.m. and I think it's 6 o'clock at night because I've got so much done. And then I'm like, shit, people are still warming up, man. Yes. People are still having their croissants and their coffee right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so peak performance is about incremental shifts that allow you to constantly um, and n constantly make improvements to your life. And it's never ending. It's a journey. There's no destination in peak performance. No driver, you know, Lewis Hamilton, 10 years running, will never go on the first year. I'm the fucking best. That's it. No way. No, it's every single day. When you're number one, feeling like you're num number one, acting like you're number two, and then just investigating, doing the work, studying, whatever it takes, asking questions, be coachable, understand that you have flaws, you, you know, you're going through your failures, all this stuff. That's what peak performance is, man. Amazing. It's about, it's about being the very best you can be and cutting the bullshit. Oh, yeah. I love that, man. That, that, I, I believe that's really a state of mind, especially with the, with the 430 thing. I mean, you get say that again. That's really, it's really a state of mind. Like you got comfortable with five o'clock, with getting up at five o'clock, and then now yeah. you move to four. Just became easy. Yeah. And then it just became easy, and then like you just keep pushing yourself to the next level, to the next level, and then and then, and that's what I'm doing as well. Like, I mean, getting up so early is like you get so much done. Yeah. So just I'm so yeah. energized by by seven o'clock when I drop my son in um, in nursery, I'm like, yeah, three hours. You done. <laughs> three hours. I've been up. I'm good. Um. Yeah. So. Just for just, just, uh, okay, just to um, to back up what you're just saying, yeah. I get a lot of people are watch it, gonna watch this and say, you know, people always have something to say. Yeah, oh, you know, you, that's crazy. You shouldn't have to do that, or why push yourself through that, brother, sister, whatever. Listening to this, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. Yeah, I'm doing it for me. If if 10 a.m. is it works for you, do it. But you can tell yourself the most beautiful romantic stories in the world. For me. Not for you, for me, 10 a.m. is lazy because I'll always be thinking, imagine if, imagine if I could get up at 4 a.m., how much could I get done? That, that, that's really six hours. Yeah, sorry, next <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I know we, we, we're short on time, so I've, I've got one follow-up question for you um, about the whole morning uh, routine. In your book, Yeah, this one. Think, um, the, yeah, this one. How to go from ordinary to, to, go from ordinary to extraordinary. Uh, yeah. You did mention about the morning wins. Yeah, so I believe that your habits define who you are. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not like a breakthrough kind of saying or insight, but I look at my habits every day and actually did a video coincidentally on social media today saying, are your habit, habits letting you down? Yeah, I saw that. The 10 non-negotiable habits that I have every day. Move, alkalize, gratitude, mindfulness, grow, 
keep in balance, cut out toxins, etc. These are the 10 things that are non-negotiable for me. And the reason why they're non-negotiable is because the result that I want in my life has to come down to applying certain habits in my life. And as long as something remains optional versus non-negotiable, it'll never become who you are. For example, if you meditate optional, you'll never become a master of meditation. With martial arts, fitness, gratitude, prayer, you will never become a master of these things if you only do it when you feel good or when your life allows it. So what do you want? What are the habits that you need to have that are in line with what you want? And then do the fucking work every day. Great, man. Lo loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, we're going to wrap up now because I think we've got... Was there, there was a question there. There was a question there. There was a question there, yes. I mean, um, one what? thing you talked about as well was uh, poison food. Yeah, you're talking about poison food because, I mean, um, you're a high-performance coach and yeah, yeah. So, it's extremely so important. I'll answer it very quickly. Talk to me about right. that. If you, if you want to have a green life, meaning go, 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 you've got to go green and you've got to eat live foods. If you, want to, if you want to feel alive, you've got to eat alive. Now, I'm a vegan, or I don't even want to say vegan anymore because people go, ah, and have this weird fucking relationship with the word vegan, right? I eat a plant-based diet. And as you can see, I don't fucking lack energy whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Regardless of whether you are vegan, uh, pescatarian, vegetarian, uh, fucking carnivore, whether you're Christian, whatever. The most important thing is that you eat natural food in its natural form. Anything that is not natural food in its natural form, meaning like a tomato versus a canned, an acidic uh, can of tomatoes, yeah, yeah. anything that is natural food in its natural form is thriving. It's already thriving as it is. Yeah. There it is in nature. Everything in nature is perfect unless we come along as human beings and fuck it up. So if you want to thrive, you've got to eat th food that is in alignment with that. So the opposite of that is dead food and sugar and carbs, especially white carbs, right? Any anything you eat that's white bread, pasta, noodles, rice, it's bleached. It has no nutrients. Therefore, let me say this carefully, it is impossible. It is physically and scientifically impossible to thrive off eating these foods and worse so refined sugar, the white, you know, the powder that you eat, yeah, yeah, not yeah. only is it giving you no nutrients, but it cannot be metabolized by your body. So if I'm already at a 50% level of high performance and I think, fuck, I really need some sugar and I eat a chocolate, guess what's happening? It's taking nutrients from your body to be worked through you. So yeah. what happens? You feel good for an hour and then what happens? And then you just Bang! Go all the way down. Go down to a 4 out of 10 or a 3 out of 10. And then you have more sugar, you go back to a 2 out of 10. Because every time you eat the sugar, you are robbing your... You're literally stealing your own energy. So cut it out or at least you know, prioritize live natural foods, regardless of your beliefs or your habits around food, eat natural in its natural form from the earth, the land, the sky, or the sea. That's it. I really like your approach with uh, veganism because obviously you're just saying like, I'm just going for natural foods. I'm just going for natural sources. Yeah, that's and it. That, that's, that's the way to go about it. I mean, even for me as well, my missus is when we cook, we really go with natural sources, like organic, proper stuff. We don't do much canned things. And, yeah. and, and you can see the impact in, in, in performance, in training, the way we look and feel as well. So yeah. that's, that's, that's really good. And uh, I mean, vegans got a bad name, a bad reputation out there. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, because there are so many other people who really like really stuff, stuff yeah, in your face. Here's, here's why vegans have a bad name. Because when you're passionate about something, you want to talk about it yeah. to everyone. Yeah. But because we don't want to hear it, I say we, the general population, yeah. because... Thank you. Because we don't want to hear it, we, don't, we, we, are, we now have a, 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 an association with these people as bad people. Yeah, yeah. But if you, were a new, if you were a newborn Christian, guess what? You're going to fucking talk to everyone. If you've just started doing CrossFit, you're going to talk to about it, everyone. If you've just been to Tony Robbins, you're fucking not going to be able to show that about Tony Robbins. This is just how passion is. Yeah. Passion flows through you. So, you know, yes, I understand that there are some really extreme, you know, vegans, but there's also extreme Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, whatever. There's extremism in everything, you know, but for me, you know what? I just, I have a choice at the end of every day uh, and I'm very fucking wise, right? And I'm very fucking strong mentally. And I have a choice every single day to put something in my mouth that involves killing 
or to put something in my mouth that involves zero killing, zero knives, zero stun guns. And I just choose the latter. I do it purely for ethical reasons. I love steak, man. I love chicken. I love fish. But I am not more important than all of these beings. So I just, for me personally, I, I choose to eat that way. But yeah, so there you go. You make your own decision. No judgment from me. I don't care. I really like the way you put it because, I mean, you, you just make it clear. You're doing it for you, for yourself. Just for me. You know? and, and, and exactly. And I've got a follow-up question with that because it's a very hot topic and I always talk a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, you work with a lot of clients, which I'm, I'm, I will assume are not necessarily vegans. Yeah, yeah. So uh, most of my life, my wife eats meat. Not every, every now and again. She's yeah. probably vegetarian 90% of the time, but yeah. most people in my life eat meat and, and flesh all around me. I don't give a shit. There you go. Hopefully I can influence them, yeah. but if I can't, I can't control it. This is where people go wrong. They try to control yes. experiences or people. It's impossible. You can influence to the highest degree. And the greatest way to inspire other people to do something better is to live an inspired life yourself. So that's why I say, don't, you know, don't watch the way my mouth moves. Watch the way my feet move. Don't listen to what I say. Watch the way I walk. You know, I'll just go keep living my life doing me. And when you see me, Iron Man, you know, boxing champion, you're doing all these things, sponsored athletes and whatever, whatever I'm yet to achieve in my life. If it inspires you, cool, man, go do it. If it doesn't, go find inspiration somewhere else. That's, that's fantastic. Last question of the day. Yeah, go for it. And, and, and I've, got, I've got so much to ask you. Ago, but I'm loving chatting to you, man. I, I've got so much to ask you. Uh, and, and I believe um, we should be doing a part two of this. But last question of the day. For well, like I said, and I'll share this to your audience, I was yeah. so inspired by your work ethic, simply, uh, before we got on this live call, that uh, I'm going to interview you on my show. So that's amazing. Facebook Live split screen. So yeah, it's really... Really cool Thank to hang out. Last question, go. Last question. Life Fitness University. Yeah. I've, I've seen your story today and, and it just like hit me. The Netflix of high performance coaching. Talk to me about that. So very simply, I got to a place where I was running events in group environments and doing high end one-to-one coaching. CEOs, athletes, um, you know, performing artists, just people that are really at the top of their game and I was working with them private, privately, confidentially on a one-to-one -one basis. But something was missing from me because my big why from a kid, when I was about to go to foster care at 10 years old, my mom told us that you're going to have to go live with someone else for a while. At that point, even though I had nothing and I barely had shoes on my feet, I remember one of the happiest moments of my life was giving a homeless man a sandwich. And I sat next to this old man that was half blinded. He had arthritis in his hands. And I gave him my white bread, strawberry uh, jam sandwich in tin four. And I just sat next to him while he ate it. You know, I've spoken about it for years. He brought me so much joy. And from a young age, I always knew that I had the impact to help people. So for, for me, it was never about, yes, I have, I'm very influential. I'm a very good coach and I have the ability to help people that are already at their max or that think they're at their max and I help them to change their perspective of how they can grow even more and more and more. But on a, bigger, on a bigger level, I wanted to be able to have this influence globally. So obviously I can't you know, work, there's only one of me, I can't work one-to-one -one globally. So for years, I've been thinking about doing an online membership where people can just plug into a membership, have recorded access to my coaching, i.e. over 100 hours of coaching videos and being increased every week, uh, having access to my coaching community, which is a private Facebook group and an that it already exists and we're building an app right now. So you have it on your phone and to get coaching from me in a group environment. So every week in the group um, LFU Life Fitness Community group, I do a live Facebook Live. I just finished one today. We start off with a meditation and then today we spoke purely on gratitude, how to use it in your life, the benefits of it, gratitude tools, etc. Uh, next week is all about meditation. The week after that is about fitness. The week after that about nutrition. Uh, and that's it. And I wanted to make it accessible to everyone in the world. So it's $10 a month. $10 a month. Basically, think of Netflix where you get private community. All my videos, all my content, all the online programs I've ever created, it's in there, free, included. You get the PDFs of my books, all included. And you get weekly coaching from me in a private group uh, through Facebook Live where you can ask me whatever you want. Uh, and it's, yeah, $10 a month. Cancel anytime you want. 
there's actually an offer on my website right now, which is you get five months free. So that's like, I think you, yeah. you we, we, we we're just talking about it now. So JP yeah, has, yeah, been, yeah. has been uh, very nice and, and, and we come up with this offer 42% off, uh, which is pretty much $70 for the whole year. Yeah, so for that, Life Fitness University. Yeah, so if they go to my website, if you can add a link wherever. I'm going to add the link to the there's, website. It says membership. Click on the membership button and it will give you two options, $10 a month or $70 for the whole year, 42% off. Plus what I'm doing for your audience yes. is uh, these books, I've either got, I'll tell you what this one, because it's more related to what we're talking about. My 10 non-negotiable habits the peak performance principles, I will actually send you a copy in the post. So I'm going to sign it for you. Once you sign up, I'll put in a little personal message and we'll send it to you in the post wherever you are around the world. So uh, that's for you. All they have to do is once they've signed up, I will get uh, the email. But all, obviously, they'll get my email address. All they have to do is mention the name Oli. What's your podcast? Actually, let's do this call. Yeah, YTM. Just say yeah. YTM show and then you're going to find YTM it. YTM show. Description and then we yeah. take care of that. Anything, anything that proves to me that you listen to this video or podcast, even yeah. on Instagram, yeah. uh, I will send you a book in the post. And that, I mean, obviously every, you're getting five months free this year plus the book. And then next year it automatically just renews at the normal rate, which is I think $120 for the whole year. But do it, man. I could, look. I can't have to, have to be straightforward. Yeah. I can't make it any fucking easier for people. Man, nah, you no. you want to work with someone else, go do it. Yeah. If you want to work with me as your coach, I cannot make it easier for you. And I refuse to because if you can't make this happen, then yeah. For the you're not, value, you're not, I'm, you're not I'm, I'm about to jump on it myself. And for the value you're delivering, I think it's a steal. And so guys, check the link in the description and, and then go check it out. I think it's a wrap, man. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Yes. Thank gotta... you, Jean Pierre. Thank you for your time. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate it. And uh, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and go check Jean Pierre on his website. It's jeanpierredevilliers.com. I'll put it in the description. Yeah, yeah. So find me on Facebook, yeah. Instagram, all that stuff. I'm there every day and every way. I'll put all this in the description. And then thanks again, guys. I'll speak to you.